Welcome back. This is Mortgage Sensei. Today, um, I want to go into um, credit a little bit more. Just really talk about credit and explain to you how credit is broken down, you know, and how you can go about getting it, right? Um, my main three points I always talk about in each and every one of my videos. What, why, how. Uh, the purpose of these videos is always to educate, empower, and encourage you towards home ownership. So let's dive right into it. Credit. Okay. The, the pro, by far one of the most important uh, things or aspects that we look at is always having to do with your credit, right? Uh, the number one is always your ability to repay the loan. Number two is credit. Number three is funds available to acquire the property. And then number four is the program. Program is dictated by the first three. Uh, number uh, number five is the home in and of itself. Make sure it matches with the program. And then number six, of course, is going through the process of home ownership. And then number seven, now you own the home. So we're going to talk about credit. Now, out of all the things that I that I run into, <coughs> credit by far is going to take the longest, right? Uh, meaning that you talk to a person today or a loan originator, you talk to me today, credit's not in order. Um, I need to work on credit. It's going to take the longest thing. And not only credit will um, uh, affect your debt to income ratio, especially if you have a lot of liabilities. Um, uh, and then working on credit will tap into, I see in most cases, tap into the funds you had available to acquire the property or the show as in reserves, right? So credit can affect the other two and as well as take the longest in order to generate the way um, or generate the credit score that you need. Now, what I'm going to do today is show you how you could go from a 300 credit score to a 650 credit score um, or higher and how to utilize that towards the home buying process. That's the ultimate goal with this, um, with this video today. Now, when we talk about credit, right, in, in all of my videos, in my book, uh, How to Buy a Home with a Loan, check the description here, um, I'm always saying 640, right? Uh, now, can you buy a house at a 550 credit score? Yes, you can. Can you buy a house and you don't have a credit score? Yes, you can. You can. Um, you know, well, Nelson, I want to wait until I get a 700 or 750 credit score. You can do that. Absolutely. Right. But what I'm talking about here is the road to home ownership. Right. And uh, at what credit score do opportunities present itself where you start getting better lending terms, you're getting more options you can look at. Right. Maybe down payment assistance program is on the radar there. Right. Or, you know, you needing credit or you need a higher debt to income ratio, right? At what credit score does, you know, everything just starts to become available for you? You start getting better lending terms, you know, what is their credit score? And it's always, in, in my opinion, will always be a 640 credit score. If you can get to a 640 credit score and you have a good DTI, you have some money set aside, you're putting yourself in a category where you can get a loan. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you to stop at a 640. You know, if you can get a 660, 680, 700, 720, 740, or get to the pristine 850 credit score, do it. Do it for you and your family. But if I can weigh the difference between trying to get a 720 or higher credit score versus, you know, renting, and getting into a home, right? And again, renting may make sense for you. I've seen a situation where renting a house makes more sense. I've, I've worked with uh, investors where they don't own their primary residence and they own a bunch of rental properties and, and they don't own a primary residence because they're traveling, you know, on a yacht or wherever kids may be. I see people like that, right? Heck, even Elon Musk sold his house and, and he's living in the the the, the Boxel, um, uh on the... Um, SpaceX uh, um, land. Uh, so again, your situation is your situation. But today, 640, and, and that's the goal that we want to look at for home ownership. Now, 
let's talk about how this works, okay? So, so first thing, what is credit, right? What is it? Credit is basically um, your history or your report card on how you borrow money and repay it, right? That, that's the, the best explanation. What is credit? Your report card on how you use slash borrow money. Okay? That's the best definition you got for what is credit. I know there's a whole bunch of other stuff, but I'm making it practical. I'm breaking it all the way down for you. So why? Why is having credit so important, right? And I know there's gurus out there. There's uh, like um, uh, Dave Ramsey, and his his system is phenomenal. No, nothing against Dave Ramsey, but I, but memory serves me correctly. Dave Ramsey is not a fan of credit. Okay, um, I'm telling you right now, America operates off of credit. Ninety percent, eighty percent of all purchases that are happen in America is based off of credit. So if you're not using credit and you live in America, you're missing the way. You're missing a whole boat. You're missing leveraging. Not all debt is bad debt. There is such thing as called good debt. Uh, debt or credit is a tool, just like anything else, right? A hunting gun is good for you if you're out there hunting or uh, for food or you're protecting your home and so on and so forth. But that same gun in the wrong hands can be bad criminals or people uh, you know, out there doing bad things Right. So credit is the same thing. It's just a tool. And what we're going to learn today is how to use credit properly. So what why is credit important? It and the number one thing is it gives you access to things when cash is not available. OK, it gives you access to things when cash isn't available, meaning what? OK, let me explain this to you. So you want to go buy this house. This house is three hundred thousand dollars. OK, even Dave Ramsey will go as far as to say save up 20 percent. So you can put a 20 percent down payment, but you're still using credit. Right. Well, if the house is three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollar house. Right. Plus closing costs. Right. Do you have that cash? No, I don't have that cash. So then you got to go utilize credit in order to acquire a property that, where otherwise you wouldn't be able to acquire it because you can't save up enough money to go buy cash, right? Same thing when it comes to getting a car loan, right? Car costs you seventy, eighty thousand dollars, right? It may cost you ten, fifteen thousand, whatever it costs you, right? Unless you're going in and paying for it cash, you're using credit. What about credit cards, right? And so on and so forth. Everything is ran off of credit. So utilizing credit is important. Now let's get into the meat. How? Okay. How do I get my credit score up? So in order to know how, we first got to understand the game, right? So if you want to be a great bas baseball player, basketball player, football player, I love sports. So that's where we're going to go. But if you want to be great at anything, you first got to understand the game, right? If you want to be a great player, you got to understand the game uh, for those that like to play, you know, board games, Monopoly, card games. Uh, you know, I love Uno and Spades. Right. But when you know the when you know how to play the game. Right. When you know the expert way of playing the game, then, you know, you can make a plan on how to navigate. Right. So let's learn how to get to a 640 credit score. So the first thing we want to do is talk about the the gauges. Right. I'm not I'm not going to go into Experian, TransUnion, Equifax. You know, they're there to do the algorithm. Right. But what I want to talk about is you. Now, let's first understand the gauge. The gauge is. On the left side, we have 300 and on, our, on the right side, we have an 850. Right. What what I'm saying is that no matter who you are, you have a starting point and then you have a max. Right. Now, if you have no credit score, you're probably over here, 300, but they're just not reporting a 300. They just say, oh, there's not enough credit or you don't have enough history or enough 
accounts for us to determine a credit score in their system you're over here right so 300 850 credit score everybody starts at the 300 everybody right and the most you can get is 850 they may change it by the time you look at this video but right now this is the gauge so in between these goal posts you got 550 points to work with 550 points to work with okay now let's break down how they go about calculating and putting in a, and, and evaluating credit and your history of what you're doing in order to get the makeup to the 850. So the first thing we need to do is draw a pie, right? This is your credit pie. Now, we have 35%. We have 35%. We have 30%. I'll go about right here. I might be off. This is 15%. This is 10%, 10%. 10%. All right. Now I might be off a little bit, but you get you get the idea when it comes to this pie. Okay. Now, again, we have 550 points. That's playable points. That's what you can accumulate. This is what you can do. Now let's talk about the 35%, right? This is the big 35% of the 550, right? Or more specifically, what we're saying is a hundred, let's put equal, 192.5 points, credit points. Okay. 192.5 credit points is based simply off of your payment history, okay? Payment history. So what is this? what this actually means is, okay, I'll go to a bank, a lender, or whoever, right? And when I get there, um, they lend me the money, right? And we come to some terms and agreements, and I got to pay them X, about, X amount of dollars per month back. I got to pay them back X amount of dollars, okay? Well, every single month when you make that payment, they report to your credit bureau or to the credit bureaus that you made a payment. You made a payment. Now, late payments are 30, 60, 90, 120, you know, 150 plus late or calendar months, right? So and you you enter into agreement with uh with a lender, right? And they say, hey, you know, you gotta pay two hundred dollars um every month on the fifteenth, right? Fifteenth of the month, every month, okay? Well, um today's June, right? So June fifteenth, you made your payment, three two hundred dollars, right? We roll to July the fifteenth, right? Now you gotta make a payment for July fifteenth. Let's say you don't make a, the payment for July 15th. You don't make the payment until August the 19th. Well, 30 days has passed. You got a 30-day late payment. And then that affects your credit points. Okay? Now, the more recent that late payment, the greater impact it has when it comes to the credit points. And in, in the world of mortgages, we care about your last two years okay we're normally looking at your last two years but you can have late payments from three four five years ago and it affects your credit score slightly but when you want to talk about what is heavy like heavy weight on your credit is any new recent late payments within the last two years and the severity of those late payments meaning that Okay, in the last 24 months, how many 30, 60, 90, 120, 150 plus late uh, uh, months plus uh, days late payments is showing, right? That's specifically what we're talking about. Okay, so how do we how do we fix this? Well, first thing you you know is making sure that you make your monthly payments on time, minimum monthly payments, whether you're setting up auto pay. Uh, 
calendar reminders, right? Or, you know, keeping the amount of accounts that you have uh, under control. That way you know that you don't miss any monthly payments, okay? That's specifically what we're talking about here. All right, so, all right, Nelson, I got, I got my payment history. I've been making payments on time for the last two years. Never missed a monthly payment. I'm getting 192.5. Yeah, as long as there's nothing else that's pulling down or age history, 2015, 2017, you know, whatever, showing on credit report that you got late payments, technically answer, yes, you're getting all of your 192.5 points. All right. So if we add 300 to that, we're already up to 492. Already up to 492. Again, we're trying to get to a 640 credit score. Now, let's talk about 30%. 30% of your credit is based off of credit usage. Okay? And then uh, the 30% of that credit, where it's, uh, it's 165 points. Okay? But what we're talking about is credit usage. Now, credit usage, technically, you can only get credit usage AKA credit utilization from credit cards or revolving accounts, right? Uh, uh, check out uh, my last video when I was uh, did the crash course on credit. Uh, put the link in the description for you. But when we're talking about credit usage or credit utilization, right? It is, and the best way I can sum it up is I have credit, I'm using credit, but I don't need credit, right? That's really what they're looking for. I have credit, I'm using credit, but I don't need credit. That is the best explanation when it comes to credit usage. Now, how do I physically go about the act of showing good credit usage? Well, when we're talking about credit usage or how I utilize my credit cards or, or how I utilize my store cards, furniture cards, medical cards, anything where um, I go to the lender they open up a line of credit, I borrow money, pay it back, borrow money, pay it back, borrow money, pay it back, right? How do I use those properly, Nelson? Well, here's how it goes. So when we're talking about credit usage, always remember this. You have your 10, 30, 50 plus rule. 10, 30, 50 plus rule, okay? <coughs> now, what I'm talking about is, um, your credit limit versus your balance, right? Credit usage. So let's do an example. Let's say you get a credit card. Let's talk about, well, let's say I'm brand new. You're brand new, never owned a credit card before, and you go to the credit card company and you say, hey, I want to get a credit card, right? And then the credit card company says, okay, great. That's that's wonderful. Um, you're going to have to get a secure credit card. Most of the time, a secure credit card means that you got to put some money up right? $200, $300 up front, and then they'll issue you a credit card, right? Unsecured means, oh, your credit looks good. You don't need to put any money up. Here's a credit card, okay? <clears throat> now, you go and get this, this secure credit card, right? You invest into your credit. Don't, don't look at it as spending is costing me anything. You're investing into your credit because it's going to save you money everywhere else. Um, now, you get a credit card, and let's say the credit limit is is $300, $300, right? $300 credit limit, okay? $300 credit limit, okay? Now, again, 50, 30, I'm sorry, 10, 30, 50 plus rule. So let me explain this to you. <clears throat> when you have credit cards and you're, you're making your payments on time with those two, you don't miss a monthly payment, you make the minimum monthly payment if you can. But now we're talking about how you use your credit. Again, I have credit. I'm using credit, but I don't need credit. That's the way you want to look to the, to the credit bureaus. So you have this $300 credit limit, right? And um, there are two important dates that you need to be aware of. Two dates. You have your uh, statement date. Statement date. And then you have your uh, due date, due date, okay? Let me explain the difference. And it's very important that you understand the difference in order to know how to properly use revolving credit. 
Now, when it comes to your, your statement date, most people don't know what this means. And this is probably more important. No, I wouldn't say this is more important. This is just as important as your due date. Your statement date is your AKA the end of your billing cycle, AKA the day your lender, the credit card company, right, sends you the statement. That's your statement date. This is it's normally the same day every single month. All you got to do is call them or ask them and say, okay, it's, it's, it's the 22nd every single month. That's your statement date. Now, the reason why the statement date is so important is that whatever they send you on your statement is the same information that they report to the credit bureau, right? So what does that mean? Well, if you're if you have a past due balance, if your balance is higher than then you know, and we're going to go into this in a minute. But let's say you got a three hundred dollar credit limit, and your balance is two hundred and seventy five dollars, and that's what shows up on your statement date. Understand that is what they report to the credit bureau. It's important to know the difference. Your due date is you need to make this monthly payment by this date, right? If you don't, you're going to start to incur late fees. And if it goes 30 days or longer, we're going to start reporting to the credit bureaus that you've been late on your payment, right? So your statement date is, is, there, is, the, um, is them reporting the, uh, the current status of your of your account, you know what your balance is, what your um, uh, what your credit limit is. The due date is the day they want you to make the they, keyword the day they want you to make the payment, right? And if you go longer than that date, you start to incur late fees. And if it's thirty days past that date, then you start uh, showing late payments on your credit report. Okay, now. Putting this off to the side. So we talked about statement date and due date. Let's talk about usage, right? Now, when we're when we're looking at usage, and I'm gonna put it over here. All right, I'm gonna draw lines. That way we can kind of okay. So everything below that line. So let's talk about usage. These this is percentages. So in the case of $300, right? Credit cards. I know some people out there that may have, you know. 10,000, 16,000, 16, 25,000, 100,000, right? It all works the same. Trust me, it all works the same. Credit usage is credit usage. It's clear across the board. <clears throat> now, credit usage. So we have a we have a $300 credit limit, right? 300 credit limit. All right? Now, the first thing you can, and I have 10, 30, 50 plus, right? Now, 50 plus or the plus is maxing out your card or going over, okay? So where you don't want to be is $300 credit limit and $300 or more balance, right? What that's doing is you're not, you're not going to get all of these credit points. Right. If anything, your the uh, the amount of points that you get, you'll see. You know, for those that's like Nelson, every single month, my credit score goes up, my credit score goes down, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up. It's normally because of of how the the credit cards are, are being reported to credit bureaus. <clears throat> now, if you're over, if you're at the balance or over, you are not getting anywhere near all the credit points that you could possibly get. Okay, if you are. 50% to 100%, right? So what we're saying is that you are um, uh, 150. You are 150 to, call it 299, right? So 150 to 299. <coughs> you're, you're not getting... All the credit bureau and these are percentages right so if you're if you're 50 percent just cut that in half right or less but you're not getting all the credit credit points if you are 30 so 30 to 49 percent and you can do the math you kind of kind of get me after a while 30 to 49 percent um it's not as bad as being over 50 percent but you're not getting all of your credit points 
if you are 10 to 29 percent that's that's better that's that, that's good it's not great it's not excellent <clears throat> and then if you are nine percent or lower now you're getting all your credit points right now <clears throat> You can pay these credit cards off to zero. <clears throat> I've seen some people say, oh, always keep a keep a running balance on it, a dollar or two dollars or anything like that. Technically, you don't need to do that. You just got to be active, meaning that with the credit with the credit company or the, uh, the credit card company in which you're using, you want to be actively using the credit card, right? Uh, you know, charge it up, pay it down, 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 right? Um, if you just go completely inactive. I mean, oh, I got uh, now. So I'm gonna open up a whole bunch of credit cards, and I'm never gonna use them. <laughs> Eventually, they'll they'll close your account. They'll close it out, <laughs> and that damages you. And I'm gonna show you eventually how it damages you. But um, but the goal is to, again, I have credit, I'm using credit, but I don't need credit, right? That's what we're talking about here. I have a two, three credit cards. I'm using two, three credit cards. But I'm showing you I don't need the money on those credit cards because my credit usage is under 10 percent. All right. Now, the um, uh, the next area which we want to talk about this 15 percent here. Is history. Right. Is your is your um, your your credit history and this makes up for about 82.5. Points. Right now, when we talk about history, um, it it accounts for what it says your credit history, right? Um, not just not just late payments, but you know you start to see collections start to get involved here. Collections can hit you on uh, a few different part, parts, charge offs, so on and so forth, right? It, it really starts to greatly affect you, right? Um, but just credit history, right? And I put this off, and it is 82.5 points. Once you get rocking and rolling with all of this, this kind of just automatically gets affected, right? So <clears throat> let's say you got some some really old stuff, 2012, 2015, stuff like that. Well, you know, you can get somebody to pull that off, just snatch it off your credit report. Um, um, you know, the um, another another term more specifically when we talk about History is, let me put, here's a better word for you. Let me put age. It's the age of your credit, right? If I, if I can give it a better definition, that way you can, you better understand it, is how old are all this credit that you have, right? Is the credit card that you got, did you just get it like six months, maybe a year or two ago? Or is this a credit card that you have for the last, you know, seven, 10 years, right? Because the, 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 the the more history or the greater the age of the accounts that are currently active that you're paying on, the better that it looks. That's really what it is. And if if I can put a uh, the number that they really want, you um you have um uh, zero to three years, uh, three to seven years, and seven years plus, right? Just to make it real simple, okay? Um, but don't get too hung up on this because again. The goal is to get to 640, right? So if, if for those that's doing the math already, so now so you, let, me, let me get this straight, right? I got a 300 credit score, and I and I get, and I'll tell you how many accounts in just a minute, but I got some accounts that I'm making payments on. Now I'm showing good payment history for the last two years because this is what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get a mortgage. Then I can potentially get up to 192 points. So now I'm up to, 492 points. Then I have about two, maybe three credit cards, and I keep my credit usage under 9% on those credit cards. It doesn't matter if it's a $300 credit card or a $100,000 credit card, right? But I keep them under 10% of my credit limit by the statement date and make sure I make all my payments on time with my on, by my due date. That way I don't incur any kind of late payments. Then I can get that 492 points and add 100, uh, another 100 and 65 points to it. And then what credit score does that get you to? Well, we're at a 640, right? All right. So let's finish this out because we, we're still going. Again, we're 
We got some people that want to get to 850. That's what we're talking about here. All right. So the next thing we want to talk about, 10% of your 10% of the credit, or aka 55 points, comes from mix, right? Your credit mixture. What types of credit that you have? So <clears throat> the different types of credit you have, you have installment loans, you have um, revolving accounts, you have open accounts. If I can just condense it, condense it down into those, those three major categories, right? Uh, collections, charge off and stuff, we don't want to include that in our credit. Of course, that's derogatory. We're talking about good standing positive accounts that we want reported on our credit report. So installment loans. Installment loans is basically this. You you go to the lender. Hey, Mr. Lender, Mrs. Lender, you know, it lender, whatever you, you prefer. Uh, you go to the lender. Hey, lender, um, let me borrow some money. They, they, they're like, okay, you know, here's a lump sum to go acquire the goods or service that you're looking for. And then, okay, great. And then you pay them back every single month. You can't go back and withdraw new money. Terms and conditions are set, right? Mortgages, uh, auto loans personal loans, right? Those are installment loans, installment accounts. Next is your um, your revolving account. Again, your credit usage is based off of credit cards, revolving account. You can't get these points unless you got your credit cards, okay? So um, so credit cards, same thing. You go to the lender, you're like, hey, lender, you know, um, I need, I'm looking to utilize some money and work some business with you over long term. They're like, okay, cool. They do the whatever. They open up a line of credit, right? Credit cards, furniture cards, store cards, medical cards, and, you know, revolving accounts. It's just lines of credit. That's another word for it. But they open up this line of credit. Uh, it can be secured or unsecured. Secured meaning, you know, there's money or or property or something that, that's tied to the debt. Uh, unsecured means it's just a signature or your promise to repay. Um, so so you you have this line of credit, right? And you go to the well, you draw from the well, right? And you put back, draw from the well, you put back, right? You think of it like a well, right? And there's water in it, right? And um, when you go there, you're, you're, you, you can only pull so much water that's in it, but also you got to put water back into it, right? Because once, once it's dried up, you can't go take more money off of it. So that's, that's how it is. You max out your credit cards, you can't take no, you can't take more money off of it. You got to have room available on the credit card. Okay. And then uh, open accounts. Open accounts are, are um, repayment for uh, service or uses of goods, right? So think of uh, auto loan lease, um, furniture leasing, like with errands and so on and so forth. Those are those are like open accounts. Or, or maybe you have um, uh, your cell phone bill, your utility bill, right? That's being reported to your credit report, right? Self-reported. Those are all considered open accounts, meaning that um, I am paying per month to utilize a product or service, and I'm utilizing that to show good payment history, okay? Payment history. All right. Now, um, last but not least, this last 10% or 55 is new requests, aka inquiries, right? That's what it is. So this is actually going to, this 10% is more of a downer than it is an upper. This is an upper, or it could be a downer. This is an upper, could be a downer. This is the upper, you know, credit mix is an upper, could be a downer as well. But new requests is normally always a downer, right? Meaning that you can lose up potentially up to 55 points the more you go out there and ask, ask or apply for uh, new credit from um, different lenders, different uh, banks. So everybody's familiar with, or uh, assume, everybody's familiar with going to buy a car. You see this a lot of times when you go to the dealership, right? And your credit's questionable. They can't go to the, the prime lender that they want. And then what do they do? Shop, 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 shop. You signed an application. You gave them a, uh, the right, the ability to go and and go to this lender, that lender, that lender, that lender, that lender. Now, they do this all at one point, right? So your credit score is not affected in that moment. But once that, that those inquiries stack up and time pass, we move to the next day, uh, you'll see your credit score drop 55 points on average. You'll see it drop a lot. And you're like, oh, gosh, what just 
happen here? Uh, well, there's too many new inquiries in a short period of time. Uh, inquiries normally take the most effect within the last 120 days or the last four months, right? Uh, the more recent there are, the more heavier it weighs on your credit and pull it down, right? Um, now, there are credit specialists out there that can, you know, use the law in your favor and, you know, a little bit of uh, finesse it and get inquiries pulled off and late payments and so on and so forth. But um, but that's basically the the credit pot. Now, um, that's the first step of how. So, again, that's the game, right? That's, this is how the game is played. Now we're going to make you a player. So, um, here's my recommendation, right? We know we need payment history, <coughs> credit usage, age of credit. That's just time, right? You can't really, you can't force, you can't force time. So you just get the accounts and keep them open and keep them open as long as you can and never close them, right? Never close them. Always keep your accounts open. Um, make them, let let the, the, the creditor close it. Make the lender, the lender going to force close because you don't request close. Um, credit mix, we can, we can, these, this pie, this pie, this part of the pie, this part of the pie, Credit mix that part of pie and new requests, we can do something about those, right? We do something about those right now. So first thing we want to talk about is number of accounts, right? AKA credit mix. That kind of falls in there. How many accounts you have? What, what mixture of credit? <clears throat> My recommendation is this. You want to have enough credit to start generate a credit score and you want to have the, the, your credit in certain areas of the pie in order to try to gather as much points as you can, right? So let me put it off to the side here. Then this little box. Okay. If I had to put, uh, if I had to start putting everybody in the box, we'll put everybody in the box like this. So I would recommend having at least three accounts. Total accounts, it doesn't matter where it's a revolving or it's an installment, right? And of those three, at least two revolving accounts. Okay, so what am I saying here? You want to have, you know, you can do whatever you want to do. Right. But my recommendation is get three accounts. Right. Get three accounts. Make sure at least two of those three accounts is a revolving account. True story. Um, I've been doing this for 10 years. Right. Or I've been doing this since uh, 2011. Right. So over 10 years. I think, you know, wow. You know, um, I've been doing this since 2011. I've seen a lot of credit. I pulled a lots of credit. I reviewed lots of credit since 2011. And you will be surprised the difference between um, people on the lower end of the credit chart and people on the higher end of the credit chart. And people on the higher end of the credit chart, people that got the 720, 740, you know, 800 credit scores, they don't have as many credit accounts. Now, if you want to get to a pristine 850 credit score, you may need 20 or more accounts, right? But I'm talking about, okay, let's get over a 640 or 700 credit score or even get close to an 800 credit score. Let me say it like that. Um, really, all you need is three accounts. Technically, all you need is three accounts, but you got to use those three accounts properly. Now, if we got three accounts, three, three accounts is reporting the credit. Number one thing is payment history. Making payments on time. Minimum monthly payments. Right now, <clears throat> why not more than three accounts, Nelson? Well, the more accounts that you have, the more risk you run of you possibly missing a monthly payment because there's more stuff you got to keep up with. I see that with a lot of people. Right. I have this account, this account because, oh, I don't have auto pay set up. I got all these reminders and sticky notes everywhere. And then, oh, I missed the payment. Right. All it takes is one time for you to miss a monthly payment and you throw a wrench in your whole thing that you got going on. So if you keep it down to something that's manageable, three accounts, then you 
are more likely to make sure that those minimum monthly payments are being made. Number one. Number two, revolving accounts, right? Two revolving accounts. Why? Because you'll get twice as much power in the uses area versus having one revolving account. So, uh, so let's say, let's say you have one installment loan, auto loan, right? Maybe you don't have an auto loan. Well, you know, maybe you're you're having your open accounts or your lease accounts being reported. Um, your uh, cell phone bill, your utility bill, your Netflix bill are being reported. So now you're getting your payment history, right? Then on top of that, you got two you got two revolving accounts, maybe three, right? In that case, uh, but you got two revolving accounts that's reporting. You're making sure that by the end of the statement date on those reporting account on those revolving accounts, you have the balances paid down to under nine percent of the credit limit. Then on top of that. You're making sure that you're making all your minimum monthly payments, at least making your minimum monthly payments by the due date. That way you don't incur any kind of late charges. And you're definitely making those monthly payments on all your accounts before a full calendar month goes by. That way you don't incur any kind of 30, 60, 90, whatever late payments. Right now. So you're, you're hitting this bucket by making your payments on time. You're hitting this bucket by having two credit cards. You're hitting this bucket because you got credit cards, and installment loans. You don't necessarily need leases, but they definitely care about credit uh, uh, credit cards and installment loans, right? You you just get your three. You don't go get any new requests. So, and they're always going to entice you when you go into those, those stores, right? 0% financing, you know, make no payments until for two years. All they're doing is opening up a new account. Boom. And then normally the account that they open, they max it out, boom, and then it drops your credit score. That's normally how it works. I see it all the time, especially with uh, care credit and any kind of furniture card. I see that a lot, right? Any kind of store card. I see that a lot. You go in and they say to you, you know, let's say you buy a new TV, right? The TV is going to cost you like $2,500, you know, $2,700. And they say to you, you know, well, how about you make no payments? Uh, or no, no financing. You say, oh, okay, great. And you got a, you got a 640, 700 credit score already. You say, oh yeah, I love not to make any payments uh, uh, for the next 12, 24 months or get 0% interest or whatever. And here's what happens. You apply for it. You open it up. The, the TV costs you $2,700 out the door, including tax and insurance, whatever, right? They open up a credit line for $2,700. They charge it up to $2,700. And now you got a max out credit card, credit score drop. See it happen all the time in my industry, right? So, <clears throat> you know, resisting the urge to go and open up a new credit card or 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 no or nor a new furniture card or store card, resisting the urge that I have, remember, I have credit, I use credit, I don't need credit, right? Resisting the urge of saying, oh man, I got, I got a, I got, you know, two thousand dollars available on this credit card right here, right? Spend it, right? Because that's that's the game. That's the trick, right? That's what they want to do uh, against you and work against you. But if you follow this plan, and please pause it, rewind it, watch it slow, slow it down, ask questions, drop it in the comments, right? But I promise you, if you follow this plan and, and you're disciplined, what we're talking about is financial literacy and financial discipline, right? If you have financial literacy, and financial discipline when it comes to utilizing credit and, 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 and using credit as a tool and not being a tool of credit, right? Then you can have a 640, 680, 720, 740, 800, even get to that 850, the more advanced you want to get. We can get real advanced when it comes to credit. And, and then it affects all aspects of your life. And then the biggest aspect that I want it to affect is on your road to home ownership. This is Morgan Shinsei here. I wish you the best. And I look forward to seeing you on the other side of home ownership.